<laughs> so, if you've clicked on this video, I imagine you've already seen the first part of this saga, my video called When Luca Brasi Tried to Kill Tom Hagen. If you haven't already done so, please check out that video first, as this video is the conclusion of that one. So let's pick up immediately from where we left off. Just a quick recap. This story is from The Family Corleone, a 2012 novel that is a prequel to Mario Puzo and Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather, and this is one of the undercurrent conflicts present throughout the entire novel. So we started off with Tom Hagen sleeping with an Irish broad, who, unbeknownst to him, was Luca Brasi's squeeze. She very likely slept with Tom in order to lash out, so to speak, against Luca's treatment of her. Sonny Corleone becomes aware of what Tom has done and warns him of the wrath of Luca Brasi and how this affair could even spark a war between Luca and the Corleones. Sonny comes face to face with Luca in a club, where Kelly, Luca's girlfriend, stirs things up by mentioning Tom, leading Sonny to panic in terms of wondering where all this will lead to. Eventually, Kelly opens up to Luca that she is pregnant with Luca's baby, and that she slept with Tom. Luca wants Kelly to have an abortion, but she refuses, and after hearing that she slept with Tom, Luca becomes determined to kill him. It's implied that Luca gives Kelly a vicious beating, and that's where we left the story. There's a lot of crucial details I've left out in this recap, so if you haven't already done so, again, please check out the previous video to get a fuller picture of the Luca Brasi, Tom Hagen situation. It's worth noting that by this time, Vito Corleone has become aware of who Luca Brasi is, that Brasi is a small-time crook who leads a gang of around five people. Luca is starting to make more and more of a name for himself as a wildcard. Only recently, someone took a shot at Luca, and in retaliation, during a hit where ironically he was supposed to be the victim, he kidnapped one of Don Mariposa's top men, threatened him, and killed one of Mariposa's button men. Mariposa is the big bad guy in the novel. He is the man who is out to get Vito Corleone because he wants to assimilate all of the crime families into an entity which he alone has supreme control over. He's based on Salvatore Maranzano, the real-life mob boss. In fact, the character is actually called Maranzano in the original Godfather book, but I guess they changed the name in the family Corleone so they could play around with the real-life facts instead of catering to the truth. But the point is is that Maranzano is as heavy as they come, and for Luca to try and wind him up by killing one of his men shows how wild he is. When Vito hears of the man's death in the paper, he immediately knows it's Brassi's doing, that he's sending a message to Mariposa, and Clemenza responds, what's his message, hurry up and kill me? I don't want to spend too much time in this video talking about Luca Brassi and Vito Corleone and how they came to know each other and how Luca came to work for Vito, that is important to the whole Tom Hagen thing, and is really interesting, but it would take up a lot of time, so I want to move that to a separate video. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with future videos. But anyway, Vito Corleone, who remember at this point is just one of many New York Dons, has not yet become the most powerful of the five families. In fact, the concept of the five families has not yet gestated, but anyway, he is informed that he and his men need to find Luca Brasi and kill him as he's an animal that is ruining the neighbourhoods with his unorthodox and violent ways. It's made clear that pretty much all of the crime families are scared of Luca Brasi. Vito is given this order by Mariposa, who is much stronger than the Corleones, and he previously blamed them for one of his shipments going missing. So the Corleones are in a kind of subservient relationship to Mariposa. Mariposa is currently, quite convincingly, winning a war against a rival mobster, and when he does so, Vito knows he'll be coming for him next, not to swallow up the Corleones as part of his empire, but to take out Vito and the upper brass, and to take over the Corleone operations. It's difficult at this point in the story for Vito to know who to trust, who to make alliances with, which faction to side with. All this is important to mention because Vito is looking for a pushback against Mariposa, a weapon he can use. He's expressed curious amusement at this enigmatic figure of Luca Brasi throughout the novel, but after he is told that he needs to take care of Luca, Vito makes the bizarre decision to organise a meeting with Luca on Luca's turf alone with the man. Clemenza and Jenko, 
Jenko being uh, Vito's original consigliere, are dumbfounded by this decision, but Vito dismisses the complaints and instead asks for a judge to give him the lowdown on Luca so he can know everything there is to know about the man before going in one-on-one. -on -one. Again, as I've mentioned, how Vito and Luca met isn't the point of this video. It's something I want to cover in more detail in a future video. But the reason why I mention this is because the issue of Tom Hagen comes up when Vito and Luca finally come face to face. During the meeting, Luca smiles and laughs, but is ominous. Vito greets his attitude with politeness, but wariness. One passage from the book I really like is, Luca wore a blue striped suit with a tie and a vest, but it did little to hide the animal bulk of him. In his eyes, Vito saw a hint of darkness behind the forced mirth, a suggestion of something frantic and dangerous, and he immediately believed everything he had heard about Luca Brasi. During the meeting, Vito lets Luca know that he knows things about him, knows that his mother was abused by his father and that he killed his father. Rather than be shocked or disgusted, Vito praises Luca for defending his mother. Luca's response is silence, as he's unable to comprehend a response where he is being praised. Vito offers Luca his hand in friendship, but Luca, being the one-man army that he is, turns it down. He doesn't fear Mariposa, who wants him dead. So it seems Vito knew everything about Luca's history, tried his best to make Luca into a partner of some sort, failed, and then the book goes on to say, Luca said, Sorry, Vito, and threw open his hands as if there was nothing he could do about the situation. But listen, he added, we have another problem that you don't know about yet. And what's that? Vito asked. Luca scooted his chair back and leaned over his desk. That German-Irish mutt that's part of your family, Tom Hagen, I'm afraid I've got to kill him. It's a matter of honour. You must be mistaken about something, Vito said. The cordiality gone from his voice. Tom has nothing to do with either of our businesses, ours or anybody else we know. This has nothing to do with our business, Luca said. Brasi was pretending to be dismissed at having to bring up this subject, but Vito could see the delight in his eyes. Then you must have the wrong Tom Hagen. My son is in college to be a lawyer. He has nothing to do with you. That's him, Luca said. He's in college at NYU. He lives in the dorms on Washington Square. Vito could feel the blood draining from his face, and he knew that Luca could see it, and that made him angry. He looked down at his hat and willed his heart to beat slower. What could Tom possibly have done that you'd have to kill him? He fucked my girlfriend. Again, Luca threw up his hands. What are you going to do? He asked. She's a whore, and I don't know why I haven't dumped her in the river yet, but still, what are you going to do? It's a matter of honour. I've got to kill him, Vito. Sorry. Vito put on his hat and leaned back in his chair. He met Luca's eyes and stared. Luca looked back at him with a thin smile on his face, amused. Beyond the office doors, Vinny, the stupid one, was laughing like a girl, a high-pitched, tittering laugh. When the laughter stopped, Vito said to Luca, if you could see your way to allowing me to deal with Tom as his father, I would consider that a great favour, one I would attempt to repay by interceding on your behalf with Mariposa and with Cinque Mani. Luca dismissed the offer. I don't need or want anybody to intercede for me. You understand that they're going to try and kill you and your men. Let them try. I love a good fight. Then perhaps, Vito said, and he stood and brushed his pants off. You might need some more resources to help you deal with Tomasano coming after you and Mariposa and their torpedoes. I heard you lost a lot of money when the Oroks hit a bank of yours. That had to cost you. Perhaps $5,000 would be of help to you right now. Luca came around the desk closer to Vito. Not really, he said, and he pursed his lips, thinking about it. But 15000 might help. Good, Vito said instantly. I'll have someone deliver the money to you within the hour. Luca looked surprised at first and then amused again. She's a slut, he said, bringing the subject back to his girlfriend. But she's a beauty. He folded his hands in front of him and seemed to take a moment to think, as if reconsidering his offer. Finally, he said, I'll tell you what, Vito. As a favour to you, I'll forget about Hagen's stupidity. He went to the office door and put a hand on the knob. He didn't know who I was. Kelly picked him up at a joint in Harlem. She's beautiful, but like I said, she's a tramp and a whore. And I'm about through with her anyway. So we have a deal then, Vito said. Luca nodded. 
But I'm curious, he said, and he leaned against the door, blocking it. You and Clemenza, you've got lots of guys working for you. All I've got is my little gang, me and a few boys. Plus you've got Mariposa behind you. Why don't you just rub me out? I know a man not to be taken lightly when I see one, Mr. Brassi. Tell me, he asked, where did Tom meet your girlfriend? Place called Duke's Joint in Harlem. Vito offered Luca his hand. Luca looked at Vito's hand, seemed to consider the proposition, and then shook it and opened the door for him. And that's the end of that little passage in the book, with Vito getting into his car and telling Clemenza to go and get someone to bring Tom Hagen to him. Evidently, Vito went to Luca, this dangerous wild man who has everyone scared, with a plan. A plan to perhaps even make an alliance with Luca, and he learned everything he could about the man before going in. But the knowledge that Tom Hagen is someone known to Luca and where he studies, not to mention the fact that Tom slept with Luca's girlfriend, completely throws Vito, and he loses whatever advantage he had in the conversation, leading him to change his objective and get Luca off Tom's back. Knowing Luca's reputation, perhaps Vito, even after making a deal with him, wasn't 100% sure that he could trust Luca Brasi to keep his word. In any case, almost immediately in the book, we cut to a scene in the Corleone household, where Clemenza is playing with Connie, Michael is telling Tessio and Jenko about his school report, Fredo is at a friend's, and Carmela is in the kitchen. Though everyone is ostensibly doing their own thing, there is an uneasy atmosphere, because everyone was trying not to hear the shouting, the banging, and the profanities upstairs in Vito's study, where for the past half an hour, Tom was getting grilled by Vito. Vito was not a man to lose his temper, and certainly not a man who shouted and swore at his own children. Tom emerges later with tears in his eyes, has a quick conversation with Carmela, where he tells her that if something like this happens again, Vito said he's on his own, and then Tom leaves. Vito makes it clear to an aghast Clemenza and Jenko that Luca Brasi is not to be harmed, even though he's been instructed to kill him by Mariposa. Vito sees no reason in murdering someone whom Mariposa fears, and Vito is aware that Luca Brasi could prove useful, telling his subordinates to make it look like to Mariposa that they're on it and trying to get to Luca. Now, by the time the next time Tom Hagen is referenced by Luca Brasi, so many events have taken place. As I mentioned in part one of this video, and my video, The Horrifying Origin Story of Luca Brasi, Brasi goes down a spiral of drug abuse, and he ends up either intentionally or accidentally killing Kelly after she gives birth. Luca has the child thrown into a furnace and then attempts to kill himself. In the family Corleone, he attempts this by overdosing on drugs, but it fails to end his life, and he instead is caught and arrested. In jail, Luca is visited by Vito, and again, there's a lot more to this. This scene is a great one, but I'm not going to go into too much detail, because the focus of this video is of course Luca wanting to kill Tom. By the way, in case you're wondering, I do not believe that there is a suggestion that the baby that Kelly had, that Luca threw into the furnace, was Tom's. It's pretty much established that she was pregnant by the time she slept with Tom. Anyway, before this visit, Vito makes it clear to Jenko his desire to make Luca his weapon, if he can be controlled. Jenko and the like, Vito included, are sickened by the story of Luca and his child, and Vito is curious about his sources saying Luca now has brain damage after the pills he took. But rather than leave Luca to rot or kill him themselves, Vito says, We do what we must, in order for he and the Corleones to win their fight against Mariposa. And he arranges for the witnesses, like the midwife Philomena, to disappear, in Philomena's case, go back to Italy. Luca Brasi in the prison scene is basically Luca as we know him in the movie. He looks slow, lumbering, he takes ages to get his sentences out, and when he does so, he stutters his words. Luca is in another place mentally, and Vito tells Luca of more secret things he knows about him, things I hope to cover in another video. And over the course of the visit, Luca is drawn to Vito, as Vito shares some secrets of his own, and then he pops the question, asking Luca to come work for him. Luca is curious, and can't quite work out why Vito is making such an offer. Don't you know I'm Il Divalo? he asks Vito. But Vito replies, I have button men. I have soldiers. I need you to be something much more important than a soldier, Luca. I need you to go on being Il Diavalo, but Il Moi Diavalo. Eventually, Luca agrees, but he says he has business to take care of first between him and an Irish mobster, 
and that's all he can think about. The final thing Vito says to Luca is, One more thing. This business between you and Tom Hagen, it's over. It's forgotten. To which Luca looks at a blank wall momentarily, turns back to Vito, and then nods. This scene between Vito and Luca in the jail cell is brilliant, but Tom is only mentioned as nothing more than a footnote, with the business having already been settled earlier in the scene where Luca accepts Vito's offer for money. But it just goes to show how unpredictable Luca is that even after Vito pays him off, even after Luca is practically brain dead, even after he has agreed to come and work for Vito, even after all of that, just to make sure, Vito has to mention it again to a man like Luca that the business between him and Tom is indeed finished. So I hope you enjoyed this video. For more content, like a deeper look at the relationship between Don Vito and Luca Brasi, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell for more videos. You can also become a patron or channel member for early video access and access to members only videos. Thanks for watching.